Welcome to the fourth session of our five-part webinar series, Marketing from Scary to Attainable. I'm Deb Merritt, Public Information Coordinator at Milwaukee County Public Library System. And I'm Tova Anderson, Communications and Marketing Corner Coordinator at Prairie Lakes Library System. Over the last few weeks, we've been covering many of, our, of the components of developing a marketing plan with guidance from library system communications and marketing consultants across our SUI region, which includes Bridges, Kenosha, uh, sorry, Kenosha County, Milwaukee County Federated, Monarch, and Prairie Lakes library systems. We're gonna do a quick recap. Um, in this series so far, we have covered why building a plan will help your efforts to market your library and its resources, how to research your community, its demographics and its needs, setting goals for your marketing. And last week we covered creating the plan, which involved choosing which venues to use, setting up a budget and using tools to put it all together. Today, you can switch it, Lori. Thank you. Today we're going to cover implementation. So what that's going to include is workflows, which is mainly going to be fitting it into your schedule and setting up timelines to help you keep everything on track and keep everything coordinated. Next slide. So when you're starting, you now have this master list like we talked about last week of all of your brainstorming ideas of what you wanted to do and where you wanted to get your message out. You've worked on your messaging. You've developed some of the pieces in terms of putting together posters and things like that. So now as you're starting to plan out your launch, it's very helpful to create a calendar and to start marking out all the different places on that calendar where things will need to happen. Um, and what the most useful thing that I have discovered to do this is start with your launch date and work backwards um, because it will come up on you quickly. And a lot of times that has to do with how long it takes something to happen once it's out of your hands. For example, when you send them something to a printer, it's gonna take a week or two to get it back. So you need to plan for that time so that if my, if my launch date is on the 14th, I would set making sure everything has been sent to the printer by the first and things like that. Um, because we work for libraries, also what I've learned is sometimes wheels turn slowly, people are very busy, and if you are relying on other people to get anything done or if you need approval from anything, give yourself plenty of time for that kind of thing to happen too. Uh, go ahead for the next slide. Thank you. So once you have your calendar, we're going to talk a little further down the way of how to set up shared calendars and shared planning platforms if you're not using something like that already. And that's going to be very helpful because you can connect it to everybody who's part of the project or who may be involved in the approval process. So we call those your stakeholders, people who have an interest in, in whatever it is that you're working on. Um, so that helps them to just like get it on their radar. A lot of times with these sorts of um, platforms, if you make an update, it'll like automatically send somebody an alert and that can be really helpful too. Um, so next slide, tracking your budget um, is something that you're gonna need to do. And I know we talked last week about how the fact is that a lot of people don't have much of a budget to work with. Um, again, I would encourage you, even though your quote unquote marketing budget um, is going to be, we know, quite small, you might have a different budget for a program or for, you know, different things that you could, you could allocate some of that for the marketing of it. And I would encourage you to consider that um, because it just would give you a little bit more to work with. So the master list spreadsheet that we talked about last week I always start with that and make a duplicate of it. <clears throat> and then this is what I do with it. I start expanding on each thing where I start to track what I'm actually spending with notes about where things are and stuff. And then obviously when you follow these columns all the way down to the bottom, it adds it all up. Um, so I can keep track throughout the year of how much I've spent, how much I still have and all of that. It's also 
<clears throat> excuse me, it's also a great way to you have everything laid out. If someone were to ask you or want to know what you've done, or if you wanted to look back, this is a perfect layout of here's what I've done all year um, with this with this project. And so it's just a really good overview for you of everything you've got going as well. Uh, next slide. So now that you've got everything going, um, now we start to talk about the results of it because way at the beginning, at this very first beginning of this process, we had you set goals or define what your version of success would be. You know, do you need 20 people to come to this or do you want this many more people overall coming to your programs this year um, and things like that. I know a lot of you are working on this concept for an over overall marketing plan, which I think is great. So then your goals are going to reflect that, you know, maybe it's this many more checkouts, this many more attendees to all of your programming. And so in order to know if your marketing is succeeding, you have to track the results. And so if you've been doing things online, if you're familiar with Google Analytics, um, that's a great place that's going to show you website traffic. Um, it's going to show you which pages get hit, when it gets hit, um, a, a lot of different things. So <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Um, that might be something um, to put in the chat if you would be interested in doing a little bit of a dive into Google Analytics in the future to learn how to use that. I am probably not everyone is familiar with that, so that might be a topic for future discussion. Um, all of the social media platforms will give you some insights on, you know, number of clicks, number of likes, um, different things like that. You're probably familiar. It's reasonably simple on Instagram. It can get pretty complicated on Facebook. Um, honestly, I'm not familiar with what TikTok does for you, but I am going to assume that it does and someone else can correct me if I'm wrong. But that's the kind of thing. And obviously, uh, for for if your goal is anything to do with people in person, obviously you're going to be tracking people coming through the door, people signing up for programming, checkouts, whatever those goals are. Um, that's what you need to keep track of so that you can report back to say, you know, we did this uh, marketing and it worked or it didn't work. You know, marketing is the world of marketing is experimentation. We try this. We think it's going to work. But then we have to track results to see if it did. And if it didn't, then we just move on and we try something else. It's a little bit of, of trial and error. And so you kind of have to be okay with that too, of like, if something didn't work, don't fret about it. Just take that experience and change it and try it again. <clears throat> and then the last thing, just like I was talking about, review your progress. And this is where the people, I'm sorry, Lori, <laughs> next slide. Um, you know, the people who are involved in this or who have a an interest in it, you're going to be reporting back with them. It's helpful to have periodic meetings with everybody involved just to keep everyone up to speed. And it's always better to have multiple heads and giving ideas and stuff. It's very difficult to work in a vacuum if you it's just you working on all of this like like some of us have to do. Um, the other thing I just wanted to, to say on that is I very often will need, you know, somebody's approval, somebody to check on something, but it's hard sometimes to get, to get that quickly. So what I've turned into doing is in my note to them, I'll say, if I haven't heard from you by Friday, um, I'll assume you're good with it. Um, just to give them a deadline and to let them know that it's it's not my fault if you didn't you know if you didn't do it. So um, just just finding ways to try to help people keep people on track, um, but also make it possible for you to move on forward and not get stuck because someone's holding up the process. Um, so then next slide. All right. I think uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about designing your workflow and managing your timeline. Um, so the big the big ideas here are to find processes or procedures that keep your goals in sight and to manage your time so you can make progress on your goals and to build tracking into your processes so that you have the data when you're ready to analyze them. Next slide, please. All right, so your marketing calendar, and I think several other presenters have talked about this, um, is really, really important. Um, it's one of the easiest ways to keep 
your plan on the top of your mind because you're going to have everything that's in your plan scheduled out there. Um, and maybe you're not like a super calendar oriented person, maybe keeping that, um, your goals top of mind looks like an outline on your wall or your whiteboard or your bulletin board. Um, maybe you're making time to read a synopsis of your plan or read a goal every week or month or whatever, just to keep it fresh. Um, and maybe you're keeping your tasks, your deadlines, your campaigns, everything on your calendar. It, maybe it's on your general calendar. Maybe it's on a dedicated calendar. Maybe it's on a paper calendar. Maybe it's digital. But really just planning that out and seeing step by step and thinking through, like like um, Deb said, working backwards on your deadlines. It's just essential that you have all of that mapped out. Um, next slide, please. All right, so your time is a limited resource and I think everybody, including me, really feels this on a daily basis. So when I mentioned managing a timeline, I mean setting aside and fighting for time to work on your long-term and midterm goals. Um, this is time to stop swimming against the current and build the bridges that you're gonna need to cross whatever swamp you're, <laughs> you're swimming in today. Um, and the only way we're gonna have time is if we make it and we protect it. So. All right, next slide, please. Um, so then another part of designing our workflow is choosing the right tools for the job. Um, and sometimes it just feels like magic when you've, you've found that perfect thing. Um, so in order to pick the right tool, you kind of need to identify your needs. Um, let's say you're gonna be relying heavily on multiple social media platforms. You're gonna to wanna to look for a multimedia scheduling tool like Hootsuite, um, Buffer, Sprout, Social, um, Later, or Social B. There's a ton of them out there and some of them are free, some of them are paid, some offer both. And what you're gonna find is just the capabilities are different if you go with a free version. Um, you'll probably have more advanced features and just more features in general if you go with a paid paid subscription. Um, if you'll be managing a team with multiple collaborators, maybe you want a project management and communications tool like Monday or Trello or Slack. Um, maybe it's just you or you and a couple people and that whiteboard or bulletin board, maybe even an online spreadsheet is gonna be the perfect tool for you. Um, if you just need to track one mega project, maybe you wanna look into what a Gantt chart is and see if you can find a tool online to help you kind of manage all the different phases and tasks that overlap. Um, next slide, please. So kind of building on that, finding the perfect tool. Um, I'm a one person department and I consult or work with 22 different libraries. And I've tried using monday.com to track my work and I'm gonna share my screen, Lori, if that's all right. Uh, Nope, that is not the right one. Okay, maybe I'm not gonna share it because <laughs> I can't find my window. Okay, scratch that. Anyway, so with monday.com, you can create different workspaces. So I have one just for my marketing and public relations, and then I was able to customize it by project, what library it's for, who's working on it, what the status is. I can add in, I can copy and paste my emails into there so I have all the info I need. I can set priorities. I can link it to my Google request forms and then I can just alter it all around. Um, so that was working for me a while, for a while until it wasn't and things were shifting too fast that now I find that a, a nice legal pad and a pen with a couple columns for the various key factors works really well for me. Um, and Deb is going to talk about Trello and I think Jira. Yeah, let's give that a try. So we're going to unshare from Lori and let me see if does that work for you guys? Can you see my Trello board? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is Trello. I love this. I've used this for years. Um, it's very simple. You set up in these columns, you set up kind of the main thing. So, and I'll do it separately for each campaign, larger campaign that I'll do that may have multiple pieces. So this is what I'm working on where I'll start with like this top column is elements needed. And this is my list of all the stuff that 
is going to happen for this campaign. And then this column is my in progress. This column is out for, you know, think people checking on it and this will become complete. So within each of these columns, you make a card and you just type in what it is and you can add a bunch of information in there. And um, when you click on something, you can add deadlines, you can add components, people involved, you can connect people to these. And when it's changing, you just slide it over. You just grab it and drag it across to kind of help you keep track of where you are in the process. And so I have different ones. Here's a different campaign. Oops, go away. Um, that is further along. This one I keep for, sorry, that's my dog, <laughs> for just kind of a lot of my projects that is, it helps me to kind of keep track of what's coming up. So this to me is super intuitive, simple enough for my brain to manage it, um, but deep enough that it really does pretty much everything I need it to do. Um, so like, like uh, Tova was saying, I'm going to unshare my screen back again. Um, there are multiple things like out there. Trello um, is free that I've been using. It does have a paid version so that it would do more, but I've really never come across, you know, I've, it's never really stopped me and said, nope, you can't do that until you pay for it. So it's, it really does offer quite a lot um, just in the free version. Um, my team um, in the system is just starting to use another platform called Jira, which is J-I-R-A. Um, it is really complex. It is really deep. Um, I've only seen it a tiny bit. It is super complicated. I don't, I don't think that's something anybody's going to need for simple tracking of projects. It's, it's meant for a lot. I think a lot of team members involved, a lot of components of something. And so probably not going to be something you need. Asana, I'm not familiar with, but I have heard of. And so like, like we were saying, most of these offer free versions. So try them out and see what you like and um, and end up with that. So it's it's a bit of trial and error, but it's worth it. Next slide, please, Lori. All right, so we know that we're not gonna be able to just always drop everything and just work on our marketing plan, big picture things. Like we're gonna have day-to-day -day stuff and that's awesome. Like we like being busy, we like <laughs> making things work and we like, just prioritizing as things come in too. But um, this is also kind of a good time to assess those day-to-day -day things that you're spending a lot of your time on. And you wanna make sure that what you're doing is actually worth the effort and that you're actually getting a result on it. Um, Cause you wanna consider like, would you be getting bigger returns on your time and financial investments if you drop some of the smaller projects and worked towards your bigger projects? Or is the routine stuff something that other staff could help with? Is it maybe less specialized than your, your special um, skills that you're bringing to the table? Um, and if you can kind of shift around some of those duties, is that going to be more productive for the library? Uh, next slide. All right, so let's talk about timelines. How do we track or communicate? Who needs to know? What do they need to know? And when do they need to know it? Um, next slide, please. So whether you're using the legal pad, a spreadsheet, or some sort of digital tool, we have to feed it the information. And here are some ideas to start with. With um, all of the tactics or, or like projects that you've you've named and want to use to work toward your goals. Um, all of your deadlines for projects, deliverables, approvals, the printers, all your meetings and check-ins, plan review dates, um, dates where you need to collect metrics. Like say for instance, maybe you're recording video views one week after they're posted or something like that. Um, and you wanna include who's assigned to the tasks that you're putting on those calendars. So you make sure that everybody is on the same page and knows what they need. Um, next slide, please. Um, and here's some things you might want to consider when you're coming up with your timeline, because we really want to avoid working in a vacuum or a silo. So you want to consider your library's general schedule, their interval of activities that you're planning, like how frequently are you messaging the same patrons, which library groups are asking for money, is it at the same time, does it need to be spread out, um, you want to consider staff hours and vacations and 
if you need the help of those people. You want to look at your school schedules if it's involving families. Um, and you want to look at local population trends too. Like, are you in a tourist town? And maybe the dynamics in your community are different in the summer versus winter. And are your communication strategies reaching the right people at the right time? Um, next slide, please. Oops. Um, so just give yourself some grace. You can absolutely start small and expand as your confidence grows. These plans and calendars and timelines, they're all living documents. Um, adjust your budget, your tactics, your schedule as necessary, and you've totally got this. Um, next slide, please. Um, so we've included some resources here, links to that budget spreadsheet, uh, links to Trello and Monday are on here. These will be included on the SUI webpage. Um, Next slide, please. Uh, so our next session next week is gonna be our wrap up with Emily. And um, your next steps for this, um, if you've been following along and trying to actually build out some of your plan. So your next step is to do a little exploration and find a calendar or project tracker that will work from you if you're not aware already working with something like that and start to work on fleshing out the plan and filling in that calendar with all that data, just like Tova was saying. And join us next week for our final wrap up. And Lori, you can stop the recording.